Hello and welcome to another bumper edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA. Today's programme is a colourful collection of practical demonstrations and exercises to inspire your artistic passion and encourage you to try something new. So sit back and enjoy 60 minutes of all the latest creative tips and techniques from some of today's most popular leading artists. Right, let's get started and take a look at what's on today's palette. Popular pencil wizard Malcolm Cudmore reveals what's in his magic box of tricks. We join Fraser Scarf on a creative journey into the expressive world of acrylics as part of today's Try Your Hand At project. International pastel artist Vic Baycroft drops by to tell us a few of his favorite things. And versatile acrylic artist Terry Chip provides this week's Art Bite project, demonstrating how to mix stunning shades of gray. First folks, let's take a closer look at one of the most popular art essentials available, SAA masking fluid. What is it and how can it be used? What I've done is I've I've sketched in a little flower and I'm going to paint in a really dark background and the idea of masking fluid is that you can use this as a medium where you can paint in real dark backgrounds and then remove it once it's dry and it leaves that nice white area. So just to quickly show you how masking fluid can be applied, you can use special masking fluid brushes or just use any, any cheaper brush I would say for this because it can ruin your brushes. Um, a little bit of soap's quite good and we can actually just dampen the brush and just very lightly coat it in the soap first, not too much, and then go for your fluid and probably paint for about 30 or 40 seconds with the actual masking fluid. And this then, once it's dry, allows you to work over the top of it and then do what you need to do with it. So it could be a sheep in a field, it could be a person walking down a path. In this case, it's a nice white flower. So just to mix up a few colours for the background then, large brush, which is the size 20 gold brush. I'm just going to mix up some nice a bit of a purple maybe, so we're going to use some crimson. That's alizarin crimson. I'm going to mix it with some natural blue, a nice purpley colour. And then that's very dark and thick, that colour, by the way. Clean brush. So I squeeze the brush to get all the colour out. And then I'm going to go for a nice, thick, natural grey, which is a mixture of three primary colours. Again, clean brush. Masking fluids had time to dry for a few moments. The worst thing you could do is actually put the water or paint on while that is wet because it will stick to your, to your bristles of your brush, which is a problem. Because once it's on there, you can't get it off very well. Just going to dampen the surrounding area and do a very simple wet into wet background. So we'll go for the purpley colour first. I'm just going to splodge splodge it in and get plenty of the colour, let it all run and mix and let all this business happen. This is part of the background to the flower. And just let it all work through. Make sure you've covered all the flower head. And then we'll go for the smaller brush, which is a size six brush. I'm going to use some natural grey, very thick and definite natural grey for this one. I'm just going to work in a few little bits of darkness around the flower there because I really want it to stand forward and it should give me a nice background effect. And we're just going to leave that, just let it dry for a few minutes. But before we do that, just clean your brush and watch out for these little bits of water where it's gathering just on the edges there. So if you clean your brush off and just lightly soak up some of those areas. If you leave them, it'll take longer to dry and also cause a cauliflower effect as well, which is like a speckly line that appears. I'll leave that to dry a few minutes. While it's drying, I'm just going to mix up a few colours for the actual flower. Small brush. I want to mix a nice green, put the water in first. I want to use lemon yellow for this. In fact, I'll get a fresh squirt of lemon yellow straight from the tube. I'm just going to use this very thick because I want it to really stand forward, this colour. So lemon yellow, nice and heavy little bit of water, mix it with some natural blue, and that'll give you a nice, opaque, powerful green colour, very strong, rich mixture of green there. For the flower head, I'm actually going to use a mixture of aureolin, which is a slightly more transparent yellow than the lemon. I'm going to mix this with some alizarin crimson, and that'll give us a nice terracotta orange colour for the centre of the flower there. Plenty of yellow, tiny bit of red for that. 
I also need to put some shadows in between the actual petals of this flower. So if I use natural grey, which is a shadow colour anyway, but to use pure grey on a flower is not quite the right thing to do. So I'm going to put some yellow with it and I'll put the aureole in with it and that'll give me like a greeny grey, which is ideal for this. And then also use a pale lemon yellow with bags and bags of water. And then we can start painting. So that's nice and dry now. So I'll take the fluid off just by using a masking fluid removal tool and to give it a good rub. And if you kind of peel it into the centre, that'll avoid any damp bits of paint over the fluid. Because remember, masking fluid is like latex, so paint doesn't actually absorb into it. So if you just kind of rub it into the centre, it'll avoid any paint destroying your background as such. It's good fun, this. You try your best to get one of the little bits that you can grab and just peel off. It's like Christmas when that happens. But we're not going to get that today. Now, if you do get any little bits of uh, paint that came through, a useful tip is to use a rubber or an eraser and just give it a bit of a rub over the top and that'll obviously take away any little bits of fluid that's left or any little bits of paint as well will sometimes come away that way. But a few spots is quite nice, you could always wash them off with a bit of water. But what I want to do first is actually make separations of petals and I'm going to use the uh, greeny grey colour that we mixed. It's quite a thin colour this, I'm just going to use a little bit. I want to twist the paint through the brush so I get a point on the brush and just take the excess off on the side of the palette as well. And then just look at each petal and just decide which ones are at the back. So that one obviously is at the back there, so we'll bring that through. And we're going to work up towards that point. And then there's that one that comes down there as well. I'm working to the shapes that I've sketched in before. It's like a little V shape. Clean your brush, just wipe it over tissue and then just use a bit of water there and just make it all disappear into the actual petal itself. Try and avoid losing too much of the white. You can see how that disappears there, can't you, straight away. And then I'll, I'll continue with this. There's a few of these. That one's just slightly behind as well. And then I could probably push the boat out and do a couple in one go. Living life on the edge there, folks. Just bring that one through there. Clean your brush, wipe it over tissue, and then just ever so lightly smudge them away. Just like using a crayon or a pencil or something like that. And you can see how it's starting to make a little bit of a separation between each petal. You see them sort of sat on the top of each other, really. And then there's one to go under there as well. Clean your brush. It's negative painting that's putting the shadows in to make a lighter shape next door to it. And then we'll go in and we'll drop in the ones at the back. There's a couple of those on that side couple over that side as well. Clean your brush, wipe it on tissue, and then just do the smudgy, blendy stuff. Don't work too dry with your brush because it won't go anywhere, but don't work too wet, otherwise it'll disappear. And you can see how that makes a nice separation there. Just using a little bit of pale lemon yellow, right at the tip, I'm just gonna drop in a little bit of a film of lemon yellow there, because flowers tend to go a greeny yellow colour right in the centre, especially white ones. Clean your brush, wipe it over tissue again and just give it a little bit of a smudge away there. It makes the flower stand forward as well. While that's drying off for a second, I'm going to use this thick green mixture that we did from lemon yellow and blue. I'm going to paint in the actual stem of the flower so it goes right up underneath there. I'm going to bring it down with the point of the brush and then I've just done a slightly thinner line on the right hand side, clean my brush, wipe it on tissue again, and then just use a bit of water and I can make it lighter on the left and also fade it away so it just comes in, if you like, from the mist. And then just drop in a couple of very, very basic leaves there. I tend to do these as a bit of an outline, to be honest. It's a very sort of modern looking painting this and it's giving a nice effect to the flower there. So just put in the outline to the leaves, clean your brush again, wipe it over tissue and then just use the blending because blending is a very important thing to get right in watercolours. It's something to practice so this is good for that. 
and then we can just make that all fade into the center there and it gives that nice effect of the uh, leaves just working in, dropping a bit more color in there. There we go, nice flick at the end. And then to finish it off really, is the orange, which was a mixture of yellow and red basically. And we can drop in this piece at the top there. So we're going to work along the base. This is a nice vibrant orange color. And then work up the side, just a few spotty bits on the edge where all the stamens and things are. And then just use a bit of water again, more blending. Wipe it on tissue. Practice your blending. If anything, it's the, probably the number one technique for watercolor painting. A bit more water on the tissue. And then we can make that almost disappear off to a nice edge. And I'm just gonna drop in one or two little lines where it just works into the petals of the flower. Pick up some of the gray that we mixed for the background and just literally drop in the little shadow that sits right where the petals start to form from the actual head of the flower there. And then just put these little random dots very quickly, just to give that impression of the flower. I'm just pulling one or two slightly darker lines coming out in between those actual petals there. A little bit of water. And then just smudge. There you go, folks. A very simple and straightforward little watercolor flower. Just dropping a few little bits of lemon yellow on the uh, edge of the petals there. But I'm sure you'll agree, a very effective, simple way of painting a flower. And that would make a cracking little greetings card. Well, folks, it's nearly time for a quick break now. But before we go, let's join popular pencil wizard Malcolm Cudmore as he reveals what's in his magic box of tricks. So, what's in my box? Or in my case, what's in my bag? So I'll open it up and uh, you get to see some of the stuff that's in here. <laughs> I'm a pencil artist above all else and I always have one of these little pencil carries that's got all my set, uh, set of uh, collection of clutch pencils in of various grades and various sizes. Um, I have always got a little bit of charcoal with me because wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, as long as I have some paper and I've got some charcoal, which is probably about the most basic of art material you can find. In fact, probably the first art material in some ways. Maybe that caveman did pull a burnt stick out of the fire and start to scratch on the cave walls. Maybe that was the first art material, I don't know. But I've always got a bit of charcoal and my clutch pencils. Uh, here I have a bit like a gunslinger's uh, waistband, this, isn't it? My selection of battery erasers, which uh, I use all the time. This side of the bag is... Uh, that's all the leads and different sizes of uh, graphite that go inside all these different clutch pencils. Just show you what sort of a range I keep. Uh, I'm sure I don't need to carry them all with me, but I, do, I still do. I've got three coloured pencils in here. Um, a dark brown one, a sanguine coloured one, and a white one. For those occasions when I use the three crayon technique for life drawing on a toned paper, sometimes I like to work specifically with coloured wax pencils. That's what they're for. On this side, I've got a bit of a collection of Conte crayons, which are a sort of cross between a coloured pencil and a wax pencil and a pastel pencil. Um, I use these for life drawing a lot, and added to those, you'll see some of these. Really useful gizmo, this. It's a pencil extender. That's how mean I am. Uh, even when the pencil gets down to that length, if I use a pencil extender, I've still got a really useful pencil length to work with. Uh, one or two colours here for flesh tones, although they don't get used that often, to be honest. Dark brown, sanguine and white are the colours that I use most of all. In this side, I've got uh, a collection of water brushes, a relatively new device. This is a spritzer. Um, it sprays a very fine mist of clear water. Again, you can just fill these up from a tap. It's like a sort of perfume mister, isn't it? Down at the... Uh, other end of the bag, uh, it's a bit like Steptoe's yard. Uh, inside the zipper compartment, it really does look like uh, a scrap yard in here, I've got this. This I use, this, this is a, sh a pencil sharpening device um, for when you're using blades. Actually very handy, it means you can work away at the point of a pencil without any danger of slicing the end of your finger off with a Stanley knife or scalpel blade. So that I find really useful. 
Uh, pop that back in here. What else have I got in here? I have a, the remains of a sandpaper block, which uh, I use for both sharpening the point on a charcoal stick or uh, tightening up the point on a pencil. But I also use this for sharpening the points of my electric erasers. OK, so that's uh, very handy. Does get a lot of use. In fact, there's almost none left on that now. What else have I got in here? I've got various um, little cylinders of eraser or replacement bits of eraser for uh, the various electric erasers. Unfortunately, all the different brands have slightly different sizes, so I keep a few of those in there. Uh, oh, two pots full of goo. Well, it's not really goo. Um, this one has kneadable eraser in it, putty rubber. A couple of ones there. There's an old one. You can tell it's absorbed an awful lot of pigment from graphite pencils. And, and this one, which is a little bit newer. Um, a tip which I have discovered of late is that, uh, yes, you need to knead them in order to disperse any sort of mucky pigment that you picked up from charcoal or graphite, but actually I've found it's easier to clean them if you stretch them. And that disperses the pigment much faster. It also has the effect of warming the eraser up, which makes it softer and more pliable. And these are really useful for drawing out little bits of pigment from especially charcoal drawings. Fantastic, if I put a bit of charcoal on there, very simply with a bit of, there we go, and use the eraser, the putty rubber, as I say, you can actually draw little bits of pigment out. You need to keep, change, you can point them, or you can make them into a blade if you want to make quite fine marks erased or want negative drawing. So I do hope you've enjoyed your excursion around my uh, little carrying bag in which I keep all my rubbish. Hope you've enjoyed the journey. It's always good to see what secrets other artists have hidden up their sleeves. Time for a break now folks, but join us in part two for today's Try Your Hand Up project when Fraser Scarf takes us on a creative journey into the expressive world of acrylic landscapes. See you soon. <laughs>